pimping out your Creality Ender 3 3D printer to make it work even better and get higher quality prints. Today we are installing a brand new Creality 3D printer motherboard upgrade. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. So you may have already seen our other video where we upgraded our Ender 3D printer to include these, which is the dual Z-axis motors. So that just added an extra motor here to add more stability and give you a lot finer control of your 3D printing, especially with longer or taller 3D prints. I was suffering from some problems where my taller 3D prints just weren't working quite right. I could get a couple inches tall, but once I got higher than a couple inches, I started to really struggle to keep the quality up or to, uh, to keep some gaps and stuff out. So one of the things I added was the dual Z motors, but I also added these bearings at the top, which stabilize the Z shaft or, or rod or whatever you want to call it, so that it would not walk over and then create binding. So it really did help a lot. Now, those of you that are just tuning in wondering if this is a good 3D printer to get for the hobbyist, absolutely, it is extremely inexpensive to get this printer in the first place, and it has a ton of aftermarket upgrades to make it better and more suitable for your needs. Don't get me wrong, the base 3D printer will print things just fine, as long as you're not too picky about the quality. Now, I've been trying to print a very high quality He-Man sword and I just can't seem to get it right. So I decided it's time to actually pimp this thing out and make it a little bit better. Today's upgrade is this guy right here. Now this is the 32-bit motherboard upgrade. I'm gonna do a quick unboxing on this. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. Now it's important to know that the Ender 3 printer may have come with the 32-bit motherboard already, or you may have an 8-bit motherboard. And you may be wondering, well, how do I know the difference? The easiest way to tell the difference is right here. If you look at the USB port that's right there, my USB port is a mini USB port. I will show you on the screen what a mini USB port looks like. That's what mine looks like right here. If you have a micro USB port, then good news, you already have the 32-bit board and you don't need to look at this video any further. Okay, but if you do have the mini USB port, you may want to look at this upgrade for a couple of reasons. Number one, the new board is more efficient and it makes this thing run a lot quieter. So for me, actually, when I'm running this thing, I can hear it echoing through my house. It's very loud. The drives are loud when they're run. So this new board is actually supposed to make the drives run a lot quieter. But the number two reason is because when I get to this, which is the CR Touch, you can't actually install the CR Touch into the 8-bit board. So you need to upgrade to the 32-bit board if you want to add certain accessories. If you are hearing CR Touch for the first time, you have no idea what I'm talking about, stay tuned for future video because I'm gonna be installing the CR Touch in a future video and I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is and why you need it. And then you're gonna be like, holy crap, now I need to go back and watch the install of the 32-bit board because you definitely need the 32-bit board to run the CR Touch. So that's why we're doing that upgrade today. Unboxing this is really basic. You just open this guy up, you're gonna get a user manual, which has all kinds of information about downloading the upgraded software and all of the ports that you can plug into. But I think the install is gonna be basic plug and play. Then it includes the board here in a static packaging or anti-static packaging. And then when we pull it out, you're gonna get your board. Now, I did notice one quality control issue and that is that this heat sink totally fell off before it dried and it's not like it's stuck on there, but it totally is falling off. So I'm gonna monitor if I have any what I would consider heat related issue issues, and then I would swap that heat sink for something that's a little bit more stable. But swapping this should be pretty much plug and play. You can see here, that's my micro USB port, exactly like I said, and it's gonna reside right inside here. So 
the next thing to do is just get started with that install. Now to do the install, it's gonna be quite simple. There's gonna be three screws on the top that you're gonna take off to get the cover plate off. The fan will be attached. Now I'm gonna unplug it just so that I can get this out of the way, but you don't have to unplug that if you don't want to, like it can just kind of dangle out of the way. Now you're gonna have a mess of wires here. I would re recommend that you unplug everything first, but make sure that they're labeled. So my wire tags are all labeled. So E matches up with E and the new board has the E on it. So I know which wire goes where. If you're not sure, it could create a little bit of issues with your reinstallation after the fact. So you're gonna unplug all those. Now, this part's getting a little bit sketchy. So what I'm gonna do is actually take a picture of it. Okay, now that I got a picture of this, I can keep unplugging these guys. Now that I've got all of the connectors off, there are power wires on here still. Now it is extremely important, extremely important that we do not mix up the power wires when we're putting them on here and that we do not mix the polarities up. If we mix up the polarities, we can fry this board and it will just wreck the whole thing. There'll be some smoke, there'll be some popping sounds and it'll be spectacular, but you will be out $50 that you just spent for that new board. So what I like to do is pop my memory card out. I like to, if possible, swap one wire at a time. So I'm gonna leave them connected. I'm going to disconnect this board. Now I decided to make things a little easier on myself and just pop this out like this. It was easy enough to just undo the two screws in the front that were holding it on. And now I've got the whole board right here. That makes it so much easier to get at these screws to loosen those off. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do this once I get it exposed where you can see it. Cause we can do all the connections and then stick it back into place after. Now you may be wondering, why does Creality ship 8-bit boards when they've got upgraded 32-bit boards? Well, it's probably because they still have some. They printed a huge batch and it's, way cheaper to use a board that already works and it works like it's not like there's anything bad it's just if you want to upgrade the system in any way you uh kind of need to get the right board so there we go we've got that separated from the base and you get your first glimpse at the two boards side by side there's not a lot of difference between the two the only difference actually okay i lied there's two differences and that is I've got an extra fan port and I've got the port that I need for my CR touch. So I've got an extra fan port right here. I've got two fan ports and I've got this port right here, which is for the CR touch, which you can see is totally absent from this one. So now it is time to transfer the wiring. Now you remember I said it's very important that we don't cross those wires. So all I'm gonna do, like I said, take one wire off at a time. So the first one I'm gonna take off is these two red wires. These are heater wires. Now those ones are probably not polarity sensitive, but just in case it doesn't hurt to keep them the same way. They're both the same color, but this one was the one on the right. I'm gonna give it a little twist. Give that one a little twist, and then we'll stick that one in here like that. And we're gonna stick, close that off. Stick that one in there, tighten it down. And with any kind of a wiring swap, you always wanna do the tug test. See, I just failed the tug test. So I'm gonna loosen all these first, because there's nothing worse than putting something together and having some wires fall out. So I'm gonna pre-loosen all these. Normally they would be loosened, Surprising. So if they're not loosened already, that makes me think that they didn't try it first. Which is not a bad thing. It just means that they didn't power it up, potentially. Okay, so now we're gonna stick this cable in. We're gonna go like this. Tighten that down. 
and then tug test, it's tight. So now I can take the other one, stick it in, and then you wanna make sure, I'll show you in a second here. Okay, tug test, it's tight. You wanna make sure to have a good look at it. Make sure there's no little wings sticking out, that there's not any stray wires that have gone over and shorted anything out because it is very, very common when you're wiring anything. So now this next one, I've got two colored wires here. I've got a black with a red stripe and I've got red. So black with a red stripe is on the right hand side. So it's gonna be hard to screw it up, but just in case, I'm gonna make a mental note of what it is. Black with a red stripe is on the right. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. Black with a red stripe is on the right. And then I'm gonna tighten it down. And then I'm gonna give it the good old tug test, which is good, it's good. And then we're gonna do the solid red next to it. And that one's good. Next up are some small wires. These are labeled as 24 volt. And again, I've got black with a red stripe on the right and then red beside that. So that makes it nice and easy. And then again, we'll do the exact same thing here. This is also a fused board, which is interesting that the other one wasn't, but it's good to know. Now, because we've pulled this out all of the way, if you were smarter than me, you could have done these wires the same way. Pulled one out, plugged one in. Pulled one out, plugged one in. Uh, I didn't do that because quite frankly, I just didn't think about it at the time. So we'll undo our power wires. And again, our power wires are quite straightforward. Black is on the first one and red is beside that. So I'm gonna stick those in. Make sure they're in all the way. Tighten that down. The power is gonna be extremely important. You don't wanna have any power bumps or glitches or have it, it'll generate heat. If it's not tight, you'll get a lot of extra heat on there. Okay, tug test is complete on all of those. Now, this is the old board. It's not a bad board. It's not broken. This is still a good board. So I can save this, I can sell it, I can do whatever I'd like with it. All of my cables pretty much have little cable tags on them. So this says this goes in Y. This one says it goes in what, X. So I can start plugging all of these in. So this is all wired back up now. So I can connect it into here with the little screws that came with it. It's important to screw it down because it actually grounds through the case, through these screws. So you don't wanna just leave them out and it helps hold everything in place where it really should be anyway. So now I can stick this guy back over here. Like that, and we're gonna just go like this. Okay, and that plugs that into there. So there you can see this right here is where that connected, that rainbow connector right here. It plugged in right there. So since we've done this, we can stick our adapter screws back in to hold this plate all into place where it's supposed to be. And then we can put our cover back on. Make sure everything's good. Okay. 
just like that. Now, you've watched me fumbled with wires, you've watched me fumble with screws, but we're not totally done yet. See, the next thing to do is actually to reload the, the firmware. Actually, no. Do I need to reload firmware on here? I shouldn't need to. Actually, I think we are done. Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug my, I'm gonna plug my power supply in and we're gonna just see if we get some smoke. Okay, I'm gonna plug my power supply in. Gonna make sure there's no cooling fans there. And let's turn it on and see if there's any smoke. There it is, Ender 3. I can go to my about printer. You see it's version whatever, 2020 Ender 3, creality.com. One thing I notice, it's definitely quieter. Like the motors aren't making noise anymore. Whereas before I could hear it go not doing that at all there we go so it has homed itself and then one thing that I definitely need to do is to re-level the bed because this is lower than this so just like that, we've done the motherboard upgrade. You already saw us do the dual Z screw upgrade. We have one more upgrade left to do, and that is this guy. This guy's gonna tie it all together, the CR Touch. That's gonna be coming in a future video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, do so, because we'll be releasing this one at some point in the near future, which will complete this. And then you're probably wondering, did the He-Man sword work? Well, I don't know yet because I haven't installed this and I haven't tried to do the He-Man Sword, but that's coming up. I would love to show you guys the He-Man Sword. It's, it's going to be awesome if it works. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.